Chapter 32, Section 3, Small Steps Toward Equality. Jackie Robinson would become one of the greatest baseball players in the history of the game. In 1944, however, he was a lieutenant in the Army, stationed at Fort Hood, Texas. Leaving the base one day, he got on a military bus and took a seat up front. The driver ordered him to move to the back, but Robinson refused. When he got off at his stop, he was arrested. Robinson was nearly court-martialed for his actions that day. Later, he would achieve fame on the baseball diamond and become a role model for millions of Americans. Over the course of his life, Robinson came to represent both the struggles of African Americans and their gradual advances in white-dominated society. Breaking the Color Line in Sports Jackie Robinson began his baseball career in the Negro Leagues after World War II. At the time, baseball was divided by the color line, a barrier created by custom, law, and economic differences that separated whites from non-whites. In 1945, Robinson crossed the color line when Brooklyn Dodgers general manager Branch Rickey hired him. After briefly playing for a minor league team, Robinson took the field in a Dodgers uniform in 1947. Being the first black major league baseball player was not easy. Fans taunted him, and some of his own teammates resented playing with a black man. Players on opposing teams sometimes tried to bean him with a ball or spike him with their cleats. As he later recalled, Plenty of times I wanted to haul off and fight when someone insulted me for the color of my skin, but I had to hold to myself. I knew I was kind of an experiment. The whole thing was bigger than me. Robinson overcame these challenges and eventually led his team to six league championships and one World Series victory. Around the same time, other professional sports began to open up to black athletes. Football became integrated in 1946 when four black players joined the professional leagues. Four years later, the National Basketball Association accepted its first African-American players. By the 1950s, the color line in professional sports was gradually disappearing. Desegregation of the Armed Forces Another area of American life in which the color line would soon fall was the Armed Forces. But again, change did not come easily. Despite the valuable contributions of African-American soldiers during World War II, the military remained segregated after the war. Many GIs returning from combat continued to face segregation at home, especially in the Jim Crow South. In 1946, Army veteran Isaac Woodard was traveling by bus from North Carolina to Georgia. At one stop, the driver threatened Woodard for taking too much time in the colored bathroom. The two men argued, and Woodard was arrested. Police officers then beat him so badly that he was permanently blinded. When President Truman learned of the incident, he was appalled and vowed to do something about segregation in the military. I shall never approve of it, he wrote. I am going to try to remedy it. Truman knew that desegregation in the armed forces was necessary, not only on moral grounds, but also for political reasons. Like many Americans, he recognized that it was hypocritical to fight Nazism and anti-Semitism abroad while maintaining a color line at home. Likewise, he saw that continued segregation in the United States could undermine efforts to promote freedom and democracy overseas as part of the Cold War struggle with the Soviet Union. As the Cold War intensified in the late 1940s, political leaders began to discuss the need to rebuild the armed forces. Many African Americans said they would refuse to fight in a segregated army. Although many leaders in the armed forces opposed desegregation, Truman believed that discrimination in the military must end. On July 26, 1948, Truman signed Executive Order 9981, which stated, It is hereby declared to be the policy of the President that there shall be equality of treatment and opportunity for all persons in the armed services, without regard to race, color, religion, or national origin. With this order, desegregation became official policy in the armed forces. Civil Rights Organizations Challenged Discrimination the fight to end segregation would never have succeeded without the determined efforts of civil rights activists. Many Americans worked tirelessly for various organizations dedicated to achieving equal rights. One of these organizations was the Congress of Racial Equality, CORE. Founded in Chicago in 1942 by a group of students, CORE was committed to nonviolent direct action as a means of change. Its first action, a peaceful protest at a segregated coffee shop in Chicago in 1943, gained national attention and helped CORE spread to other northern cities. It went on to assist in the desegregation of many public facilities in the north, and then turned its attention to the south in the late 1950s. 
Another key group, the National Urban League, formed in response to the great migration of blacks to northern cities in the early 1900s. The Urban League focused on helping African Americans achieve success in the North. It counseled newly arrived migrants and trained black social workers. It also promoted educational and employment opportunities for African Americans. During World War II, the Urban League helped integrate defense plants. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the oldest major civil rights organization, also remained active in the struggle for equal rights. Founded in 1909, the NAACP continued its efforts to promote civil rights legislation. In 1939, the group established a legal arm for civil rights actions. The NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. The following year, Thurgood Marshall became the head of this group. The Legal Defense and Educational Fund focused on defeating segregation to the court system. Its main weapon was the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. This clause prohibits states from denying any person equal protection of the laws. Since a clause does not allow states to discriminate, it is crucial to the protection of civil rights.